Please turn in your Bibles to uh, John chapter 6, verse 60. Uh, well, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to read John chapter 6, verse 66. The disciples who left Jesus, the just Jesus evangelistic campaign, day number 82. Verse 66. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. We dealt with up to verse 65 last night. And then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? By the way, just like Jesus knew the false disciples would leave him, he was not surprised or shocked by that. He knew that the real disciples would stay with them. Verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Somebody ought to say amen right there the disciples who left Jesus. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for what you have already done. We thank you for the souls that were saved last night around the world. We thank you for the people who have rededicated their lives to you. We thank you for the thousands who are hearing the gospel preached to them. And for some, it's a matter of planting the seed. Uh, for others, it's watering the seed. But Lord, we know that you will grant the increase, and we pray that you would. Uh, Lord, forgive us and cleanse us of our sins and failures and faults as Christians. For we're not perfect, even though we're saved. Create within us a pure heart and a right spirit, where we have grieved or quenched your Holy Spirit in any way with a bad attitude, an evil word, or whatever the case might be, forgive us of our sins so that your Holy Spirit can flow freely, so that your anointing and your unction can move freely upon us, and so that your Holy Word can go forward unhindered. In Jesus Christ's name, we pray that you would save that soul that is near as hell and revive every Christian and reclaim every backslidden uh, Christian for your glory, praise and honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake, amen. You may be seated. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Ladies and gentlemen, E.A. Bloom said Jesus' rejection of their desire to make him their political king, his demand for personal faith, his teaching on atonement, his stress on total human inability and on salvation as a work of God with the understanding that humans do have responsibility for their decision. All these proved to be unpalatable for many people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jews who rejected the Holy Spirit's work in their hearts and lives decided not to continue following Jesus Christ, who they were trying to make king. The Bible says from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Some might think that this would have saddened Jesus. It did not. He was not even surprised for he himself had predicted it. He told the crowd 
But there are some of you that believe not. In other words, you act like you believe. You're nodding your head. Some of you are saying amen, but you don't believe. And John adds, for Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not on this Easter week, on this Holy Week, as some call it. Normally, I feel a little bit out of place. Normally, I'm preaching eight messages throughout Easter week or Resurrection week, as I like to call it, on the resurrection of Jesus Christ in some form or fashion. But God has led me to continue on preaching uh, the Just Jesus evangelistic campaign. Be that as it may, the actions of the crowd did not worry Jesus because Jesus is God, Emmanuel, God with us. He's omniscient. He knows all things. He knows everything. And yes, he knows everything about you living today. He knows whether or not you're just a church member in name only. He knows uh, whether or not you believe truly in him. God knows all things and Jesus is God. He had told them that the way to God is straight and narrow and few there be that find it. The turning away of these people who once called themselves Jesus' disciples indicated that they loved other things more than they loved God. With all of their religious activity, one might be fooled into thinking that their chief aim in life was the improvement of their relationship with God. Yet when God was staring them in the face, they turned their backs on him. I told someone last night after the services, I was in front of the, uh, one of the stores in town. My two sons were, were going in there in one store, my two daughters in another store. And I was talking with uh, this preacher and I told him that uh, I believe one of the marks of Christians is that they don't question God, they don't question Jesus, they don't question his word. But some do. But I, I believe they're few in number. And they never turn away from Jesus. So these were not true disciples. These were false disciples. I've read this passage for years. And I never had any trouble in my mind about this passage. I never thought about leaving Jesus. That's no credit to me. That's a credit to the Holy Spirit of God. And to the Word of God. And to God. Not me. And to Jesus who saved me. The true born-again Christians, they don't question uh, everything. They don't question things in the Word of God. They just believe it. And they stick and stay. You couldn't pull them away. Even when they go through trials and tribulations and hospital beds and death beds, they hang in there. They don't understand it. They don't understand it all, but they believe it all, and they thank God for it all. Amen, man, some man, some man, somebody. The true Christians, the true disciples. Mark those who are always questioning what the Bible says, always uh, got some kind of dispute. Always, I, I stay away from Christians who always want to de debate something. Fight over something. Question something. Just believe it and trust God. And if you don't understand it fully, pray and ask God to give you the understanding uh, in the by and by. It'll be all right. Jesus was not fooled. Jesus was not bamboozled. Jesus was not tricked by these phony Christians. <laughs> and he's not tricked today. He knows his own, beloved. 
he knew that these people were more like the young rich man who went away sorrowful, unwilling to follow Jesus because he loved his money and did not want to give it up for eternal life. And uh, Jesus, you're touching my money now. Now, you know, I, 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 we got to do something about this. I can hear the young rich ruler saying what Trump says. Now, here's the story, Jesus. Here's the story. <laughs> he trips me out with that. Here's the story. These people decided that keeping their status in the community and remaining in the favor of the religious establishment and the political establishment was more important than the guarantee of eternal life and following Jesus even through some suffering and some misunderstanding. But not Peter and the true disciples. As they walked away, Jesus says, Therefore said I unto you that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my Father. Because these people were hostile to Jesus and rejected his words, they went away. The Spirit was not free to work in their wicked hearts and lives and illuminate the truth of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, salvation full and free. Now Jesus turns to the twelve disciples whom he had chosen, and the spokesman spoke up. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? Jesus wants to know if they too would leave him and follow the crowd. Numerous times throughout his ministry, Jesus challenged the disciples' faith and reprimanded them for their doubts. After seeing the crowds celebrate Jesus and desire to make him king, it must have been <clears throat> a letdown for them to see so many decide to leave Jesus. Peter responds to Jesus' question saying, Lord, to whom shall we go? And I've read this passage hundreds of times over the past 36 years. And uh, when I would come to this passage, I didn't get caught up with what the false disciples did. I always clung to this right here. Whom shall we go, Lord? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen, somebody. Amen. Peter got that right. Yes, Peter got some things wrong, but he got that right. And we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. And that's what real Christians believe today. Born again Christians believe that today. Come hell or high water. They are sure that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They are positive. They have no doubt about it. They might be sinking. They might be going through all kinds of trials and tribulations, but they will tell you that they are sure that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They might be on their deathbed, but they raise their hand. My trust is in Jesus Christ. Beloved Peter, speaking for all of the disciples, gives a resounding declaration of his faith. His attitude is, who else is there to go to, Jesus? You have the words of life. There's an old hymn in the hymn book that talks about the words of life. Nice little sounding hymn. If I could sing, I would sing it to you. But you would stop listening to me preach if I started singing. My dad was able to sing. I, as that talent skipped me, and I think it skipped the next generation as well. We got the gift of our, my mother of not being able to sing. Where else would we go? 
Peter said. You have the words of life. Now at this point, beloved, the disciples were not mature in their faith. They were not great theological experts. They did not have a complete understanding of what they were getting into. But they had faith. They had faith in Jesus Christ. They were willing to believe, whereas the so-called disciples, the phony disciples, the other Jews were not willing to believe in this man called Jesus. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, was already at work in their lives, Danae. And little by little they were being perfected in the faith, just like truly born-again Christians today. We may not understand it all, but, but we believe it all, and we thank God for it all. Amen, somebody. Amen. God requires nothing of you in order that you might receive salvation other than believing on his son, Jesus Christ. He takes the first step. All you have to do is believe. Once you believe, Jesus comes to live inside of you. His Holy Spirit begins working within you. And he will help you to understand and live out your new life in Christ. Dear friend, if you have never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, as the music plays Come to Jesus, here's how you can take the first step of faith and invite Jesus Christ into your heart. The Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shalt be saved. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for you, was buried, and rose again. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Pray and ask him and invite him into your heart. Ask him to save your soul. And what we call the sinner's prayer. Do you believe today? Do you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world? That he died for your sins, shed his blood for your sins, was buried, and rose again? If you do, pray with me right now what we call the sinner's prayer, phrase by phrase, and mean it from your heart. I'm just helping you to pray, that's all. Just like someone helped me to pray, millions more were helped in their prayer because they never did it before, that's all. Pray with me right now. Holy Father God, Please have mercy upon me, a sinner. I come before your throne of grace, acknowledging that I have sinned against you, that I have broken your Ten Commandments at certain points, and I am guilty and I deserve hell. For Jesus Christ's sake, your Holy Son, please forgive me of my sins based upon his perfect and holy shed blood. I now believe the best way that I know how that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins, was buried and rose again. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and save my soul today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to repent of my old life and follow you in the new life, into eternal life. In Jesus Christ's name I pray and for his sake, amen. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now, just now. Come to Jesus, come to Jesus, just now. If you have not come, come now. He will save you. He will save you. He will save you. Just now, just now. 
He will save you. Jesus will save you. Just now. Dear friend, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, he shed his blood on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose again, allow me to say congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is trusting Jesus Christ as your Savior and calling on his name to save you. That's what I did some 36 years ago, and I have never been the same since. And uh, you have done the most important thing in life, and I assure you that you will never regret it. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, dear friend, go to gospelightsociety.com and read what to do after you enter through the door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, we're getting there. In a few more weeks, we'll be there. John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior today, please email me, just like several people emailed me last night, saying they got saved in all parts of the world, and we give God the glory. You can be saved today. If you did get saved, email me at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com and let us know. We have some free material that we want to send you immediately. We also have a newsletter that we want to send you each and every day to help you grow in the faith. You don't have to give us a dime. If you have a prayer request, also, please email that to us as well. And we will pray for you, dear friend, until you tell us to stop. God loves you. We love you. And may God bless you real good. Let's all stand.